Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. name let angels prostrate fall bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord of all bring forth the royal diadem and crown him lord Chosen seed of Israel's race, ye ransom from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown. pray. Almighty and eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that you have brought us together, brought us safely through another night, into a new day, and into a new week. And now, as your Holy Spirit is around us and within us, and as we lift up our voices in songs of praise and thanksgiving, we ask that you nourish us with your Spirit, that we will leave here today better able to meet the challenges of this day and the coming week. We ask and pray this in the name of Jesus, our Savior who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Almighty eternal God, we ask that you bless these gifts that are placed upon your table, that they would be used to strengthen the ministry and the missions that you have laid before us, that all who receive 
will come and to know you and your love through your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. scripture reading this morning is Acts 8 chapter 26 through the 40th verse and it can be found in the Pew Bible on page 127. It's Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to, to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian, a eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of the Candace, which it means the queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip to go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading, Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humil humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture that told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can, I stand, what can stand in the way of my being baptized? And, <clears throat> and he gave orders to the stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Uh, Philip, however, appeared at Azores and traveled about preaching and the gospel in all of the towns until he reached Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, would you join me uh, in the responsive reading? It's Psalms 22. From you, O God, comes the theme of my praise. In the sight of all people, I will serve you faithfully. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They who seek the Lord will give God praise. All will remember the Lord and will bow before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. All the rich of the earth will in, will in awe worship the Lord. All who go down to the dust will weep, for they cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told of him. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people he has. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Yeah, one, yeah, be at the mic so the people on Zoom can hear what you're doing. All they hear is silence. <laughs> I just wanted to um, thank everyone who is supporting our youth group. Um, Fran and I and Carter are having a great time with the kids. And we had a, um, a raffle fundraiser. And today we're drawing the winner for our uh, youth group raffle. So um, if I could get assistance from one of the youth group members. Um, Ella, would you please join us? There are two prizes for this raffle. We're going to draw the second place first. This is a $10 Lowe's gift card. Nancy Howell is the winner of our $10 uh, Lowe's gift very card. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> Cassidy, will you join us for the next drawing, please? <laughs> All right, the Be grand prize. You, Be careful how you draw. <laughs> uh, the grand prize is either a $50 Lowe's card or yard work by our youth group members. So it's, we'll see. Kyle McCreary. Isn't that um, Mark's, Mark's grandfather yes. won that one? Yes. All right, so great. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> I do welcome everyone this morning and those also who are on Zoom listening. Uh, just a reminder of things in your bulletin, the announcements that you should be aware of. Uh, one of the things also is that uh, Nancy would like to get out a newsletter, so she's going to need stuff. If she hasn't already gotten it, she could uh, use stuff by tomorrow. I'm sure she'd appreciate that greatly, uh, especially photos, because we all like to see pictures, and, and uh, uh, it's good to see a, an active church. Uh, in your bulletin is the prayer list. There is one update that uh, Joe White passed away this morning. Um, so we want to keep that family in our prayers. Before we have our morning prayer, let us go to the Lord in a moment of silence to reflect and prepare our hearts. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, you have called us this morning into this place, a house of worship, a place that we gather in fellowship, in praise of you, in thanksgiving. We gather in times of sorrow and in joy. It is an important house for the family you have called together in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We are grateful for your presence and your love that is revealed to us through our Savior and grateful for your spirit that guides us, guards us, directs us, gives us those words that are needed when they are needed, who enables us to give witness to your goodness and love, who gives us the energy, the vision to do things that we might not have ordinarily done, but because we see a need within your kingdom, we take it to care, and it becomes one of our missions. Gracious God, in our world, there are those that are suffering. We lift up, especially those who are in a time of mourning. We give you thanks for all life. Thanks for those times that was spent. But we ask that your Holy Spirit bring comfort to those who are suffering in the loss. Be with those who this morning awoke and it was their opportunity to provide a meal for the homeless. They saw a need in their community, a neighbor in need, and they were able to react and be of assistance. 
there were those this morning that awoke and the tornadoes that had gone through their community and taken their home, they are trying to rebuild and their neighbors are there helping them. Continue to bless all who in the goodness of their hearts look after the neighbor in love and companionship and in compassion. The wars we ask might come to an end and yet we know the realities that there is evil in the world. And so we simply ask that where it is your will, your spirit can touch the lives of those who are hurting and bring them peace. In our community, we give you thanks that you have called us to gather as a church, that we can serve this community in the ways that you call us to. We give you thanks for our neighboring congregations, for they too are in service, revealing their love and their commitment to your ways. Continue to bless our community that we would find your spirit wherever we look, that there will be a sense of community and a peace for all who reside here. We ask all of this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is 297. Yeah. 
The gospel lesson today is from the gospel according to John, from the 15th chapter, beginning at the first verse. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down with care God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from his sin. When hoary times shall pass away and earthly thrones and kingdoms fall, when men who hear refuse to pray on rocks and hills and mountains call god's love so sure shall still endure all measureless and strong redeeming grace to adam's race the saints and angels' song. Could we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies a parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade? Redeeming love, no scroll. I got it mixed up, sorry. To write the love of God above would drain the oceans dry. Nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure, the saints and angels' song.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. To some people, to tell their Christian story is a challenge. They know their story. They've known it for years. But to put it into specific words, it can be a challenge. I went to a Southern Baptist seminary, and everybody there had their testimony. There were those who I just at times would ask them, are you, are you testifying? Are you, uh, you know, making it sound like you were really the worst off, and now you're the best off? I, you know, I, I, are you... I, are you taking pleasure in what you did? Because I said, some of you guys who, who, who were on drugs or you were, you were doing things you shouldn't have, and I'm a preacher's kid. We got into trouble, but not bad trouble. <laughs> so my testimony is rather weak because my mother says I was in the choir loft within four days of my birth because she sang in the choir and Dad was the preacher. I've been around a long time. But that kind of witness isn't it, because it's not enough that you were just in the church. It has to have some sort of meaning. So to tell a, a story about what Christ means to you is important. And what has Christ, that part of your life that you know he's been there all along, that's important. One of the things I also was told in seminary is, if somebody asks you about Jesus, you got about two, possibly three minutes to give them an answer. They're not paying any attention after that. So it's got to be quick and concise. And I got to tell you, honestly, pastors are not the most concise people in the world. I know that's surprising to you. And so it is a challenge. Now, suppose you're Philip a disciple of Jesus. Now, why Philip was chosen for such a task to go out and it's sort of like a, a cold call knocking on a stranger's door. But the Lord said to Philip, go out on that south road, headed towards Gaza. Got that in your mind now? <laughs> and there you're going to find who it is you need to talk to. And indeed, there was the eunuch on his chariot by the roadside, and he was reading from the book of Isaiah. Now, I want you to think how rare books would have been in that day. That you would have more than a couple of passages from Isaiah would cost you dearly. But the scripture says he has a book. The Lord, I believe, knew this. He had already come from Jerusalem. It says he went there to worship. So he knew God. And he was reading from Isaiah. Now, I don't know how many of you have actually read Isaiah. You need to. Because if you want to know about the Savior, that's where Matthew turns, where Mark turns. To Isaiah. At Christmas time, most of our Old Testament readings come from Isaiah because that is the place where this prophet Isaiah was giving hope to the people in exile, where they felt God had abandoned them, and Isaiah says, No, he's going to come and, and it will be a suffering servant. They will treat him horribly, but he's come for you to save you. Now, I think Philip lucked out in a sense because he goes up and Philip, having been a good disciple and having most likely grown up in a good Jewish community, knew who Isaiah was, knew what Isaiah had prophesied, and more than that, as far as Philip was concerned, he knew the prophecy had come true. 
He had it all there. But <laughs> he's going up to a complete stranger. What are you reading? And this is also something is that the eunuch is the treasurer, treasurer for Ethiopia. So he must have been on some sort of diplomatic mission. This stranger comes up to him, and he didn't have to fear Philip. And so this is, I'm reading from Isaiah, but I'm just reading. Now here is what often happens in my line of work, and sometimes in others. You take that step and you go, do you understand what you're reading? <laughs> and he says, well, how can I understand it unless somebody explains it to me? How often? Maybe you've been in that position in, in some way where, well, what you were doing made absolute sense to you, but it doesn't really click with anyone else. And they need it explained because it's important to be explained. And so... He starts with what he knows. He starts with what just has happened. He starts and connects Isaiah, that prophecy of the suffering servant, with the one Jesus, who they attacked. They crucified him. They buried him but couldn't keep him down. <laughs> and he is that one that is here. And so the story was told. It didn't take two chapters for him to tell the story. We get it very simply that the message got across. It's not a difficult message to tell of, but it's got to sink in. See, and this is what is good about this passage. So he didn't say, well, thank you, Philip. Have a good day. Apparently, Philip, why don't you ride along a little longer? We're going to talk. <laughs> and so the chariot's moving on. And something must have clicked with that man. He sees water in the distance. And he says, because it's tradition, if you have come to a point in your life, in whatever culture, most of the culture said you need to wash off the old and bring on the new. And he says, I see no reason why I can't be baptized. Now, I would, I would be flabbergasted, but I, Philip is like, yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> this is good. This is wonderful. Because, see, it moved from the head to the heart. And all it took was Philip's presence and a short story of salvation that made the difference in that man's life. I think sometimes the church has made it awfully difficult for that story to be heard in the way it needs to be heard. It's just a short, simple story that God sent his son to save us. Why else would it be at a football game if somebody holds up John 3.16? We all know the story. It doesn't have to say any more than that verse there. And even those who would say they don't believe, they even know what that verse is. It's out there, but it needs to move from the head to the heart. That's where the gospel comes in today. Jesus says, fruit. It's about fruit, people. The master gardener has trimmed up the hedges, trimmed up the trees so that we get better fruit. But it doesn't work unless you're on that branch with me. Because God's expecting you <laughs> to be fruit. Because Jesus did his thing and still does his thing. He's still connected to that branch. He and God are, are one together. But he says, God needs you out there because there's fruit to be had. And people need to be nourished. Stay on that vine. Hang on. And be the good fruit. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. 
while the branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so it will be even more fruitful. See, God will shape what that message needs to be as much as he shaped putting Philip where he needed to be. Sometimes we miss those opportunities of, of having that word when, when you walk away and say, oh, I should have said something. And it happens. It's okay. God hasn't forgotten. And it might not have been you that was supposed to give that message. But that you realize that, that's fruitful. Because next time, your eyes might be even more open. Fruit is the expectation because we have a living branch. It's not just an ancient old story, a fable. It is a living tree that we are attached to, a living presence. So remember that the baptism idea wasn't Philip's. It was the eunuch's. And what's so interesting about the eunuch? He was not considered a real person. He was a servant. He had no rights. He could have no family. He owned nothing. But he found the love of God. How many people in our world feel they're not anybody, that they have nothing, and don't know they have the love of God? Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, continue to bless us that we who have been fruitful in our own lives will share that witness so others will bear fruit. Continue to bless us as a congregation so that our witness will be for your glory and honor and it will bear the fruit that you need us to bear. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join together now in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Certainly. All right. Those who are able, please rise for the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen.
Fast falls the even tide, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee. Oh, abide with me. Swift to its close ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can for the tempter's power, who like thyself my guide and stay can be? Cloud and sunshine, oh, abide with me. Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks, and earth vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O oh Lord, abide with